Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and yes, today it's all about Skyrim, the adventure game. I was able to play the first two chapters of the very first campaign just the other day and I really liked it. So I was wondering if you guys would be interested in seeing a playthrough on my channel. And it seems there is some appetite, which is good news. But there was also a good suggestion to go with the tutorial first, which I actually never played. I directly started with chapter one of the first campaign so I don't really know what's happening I did read through some of the things a lot of these <clears throat> steps are hmm, very scripted so you're not really rolling dice you are setting dice to certain numbers but I still think it might be worth it as I can still explain you some of the mechanics and how it would normally work and after this tutorial it shouldn't take an awful lot of time the rules say 20 to 30 minutes but yeah as I'm talking a lot I mean you know me it might take a little bit longer than that and again especially if I'm explaining stuff how things should be but after this tutorial I will then let you decide if I should go into the normal campaign um, because there is definitely some or there are some spoilers in this game I don't think it's the end of the world because there is a good amount of randomization in this game that you can enjoy each of those campaigns I definitely more than just once that's at least my take so I think again it's not that bad but ultimately I want to let you decide if you want to watch it and if I see some yeah good amount of interest I will then consider this and then it's yeah basically at your own risk <laughs> obviously before we get started you shout out to all of my patrons and channel members out there you guys are truly amazing I even received a nice thanks just the other day so if you want to support my little channel here you can join me directly on YouTube uh, patreon there is a link to my page there you can join me here on YouTube for a very small fee but that's the same for patreon you can again leave the click the little thanks button beneath that video for the tip jar uh, like and subscribe leave a comment this also greatly helps of course and I think with that being said we should be ready to go and let's start with some flavor for the tutorial mission Moira Kanai a servant of two masters she obeys the commands of the Thalmor the armed forces of the Aldmeri Dominion and acts as the hands in Skyrim but she also obeys me for now our goals are aligned but how long Will that last? So basically, this is what uh, the tutorial is telling us to do. There are some nice little setup instructions overall. I think I have done that already. You don't get to choose which character to go for. Unfortunately, our hands are tied, but it's not too bad as we get to play Khajiit. I think there is a, basically a nameless Khajiit in this case. So you can definitely rename your characters in this case. You shouldn't really write on those cards, but yeah, for whatever, think of a Khajiit name. I have no clue. We have some special abilities here, like this innate ability once per game turn. We have the night vision in combat. We can lose one health to gain one extra sneak. We would start the game with claws instead of fists. I didn't really check those out, but in the tutorial, we get some extra stuff anyway. So we are starting with a hide armor, which already gives us one sneak. We get a sneak from our iron dagger um, and it also doubles the amount of damage and we also start the game with the main quest the words of the daedra my little pawn you are living a busy life aging for the thalmor and more importantly for me now do my bidding i want that place empty the reason you need it no reason. So we basically have to move to a cave in Whiterun, which happens to be relatively close to our current location here. So we are here at Whiterun. We want to move to the cave location here in the Whiterun hold. So this whole region here is a so-called hold on the game board. This is our little, unfortunately, unpainted miniatures. The miniatures are actually pretty good. So I might really consider painting those. Yeah, I have the good friend I played the game with and I played her copy. She is actually a very, very talented talented miniature painter. The problem is she didn't paint those mini, so they look pretty much the same like mine, which was a little bit underwhelming. <laughs> but yeah, that's life. But yeah, that's basically where we need to go to. This game has definitely some sandbox character, so you don't have to follow the main quest, but unlike, um, let's say, normal Skyrim, the video game, mm, you have a lot of timers to consider here. So you cannot move around the world endlessly unless you are playing the free roam scenario, that is. Um, I didn't really check it out, but this seems to be more like actual Skyrim where you can do 
everything or nothing. But yeah, in this case, we have a very scripted set of activities to perform. So, but the first thing to do is to draw our very first event card. Also, those four event cards are basically staged. So we, in theory, know what's on top of this. But again, I want to play it a little bit more interesting for you. So let's see what it is. So let's have a look. A troll thread. This is a world quest which will go to the world quest area on the board. Someone disturbed a group of trolls. They are now on a rampage. Here I must say the flavor text on these cards is also very very underwhelming. Um, this is the most boring stuff I ever read on um, basically fantasy themed board games. Very generic stuff, not really fleshed out. The cards, um, the quest cards are much better but everything that's here random is, is very I mean, generic. Whoa, whoa, someone disturbed a group of trolls. But yeah, okay. That's that's me. So the next thing is we have to deal with a threat token here. But let's do things in order. First of all, we will place the world quest onto the world quest area here. We can have up to four of those world quests whenever we um, are either failing one or if we get a fifth one, we have to fail one of those and then the fail effect will kick in. Typically not so great stuff. Next up, we have a mission location on this card here, which says to place a mission counter on a mine in Yalmarch. So up here is the Yalmach hold and this is the only mine that's in here, which means we have to place a neutral marker on this. This is basically either a personal quest or a main quest, so this is in our color, this is something that we have to achieve. These things could be um, achieved by any of the players. We are playing solo and the tutorial is solo play only, so there aren't any other players, so I simply have to deal with that sooner or later. Then next we really have to deal with a threat that comes on the event card. Typically this is two, but for this tutorial I think it's only one. So we have to place one of those threat tokens on, let's say, a space that can take it. This can be either personal quest, this can be main quest, this can be world quest, but we can also place those onto strongholds here on the board, which is typically a very bad thing because as soon as you put threat on those spaces, you can no longer really, whatever market is inaccessible, if we place one this is unstable, the next counter in the same uh, stronghold would close it, then we have to pay five gold in order to access it, or it's rioting, and if it's rioting, then we are adding more information more threat to the board. In this instance the tutorial tells me not to place anything on those strongholds here. No we are going to place this onto the world quest itself which is fully legal and okay. Right now it's at one so it's not yet failed but again as soon as the second token is placed and it cannot take any more than two we will trigger the fail effect on that card. And yeah, basically when we go there, we have to do this clear. Typically means you have to encounter a very specific enemy. This would be card 367. I guess it's a troll, um, which you would have to fight. And then if we would be successful with doing this, again, if this is failing, then we would lose accordingly or would fail this scenario with whatever terrible stuff. There aren't any other effects in place, so we can move into our movement phase. Move into our movement phase. Yeah, that sounds very clever. So you can basically move um, simultaneously. All the player can do that. You can typically move up to four spaces. If you have a horse, you can move five spaces. Right now we don't have a horse. If you start your turn on a stronghold, which we are, we could also pay the carriage to move much further, but then it costs us money. Right now we don't have any money. So um, that's what we have to do. But again, we only need to move one space here to the cave in the white run hold anyway. So let's simply do that. We want to deal with our main quest here. And so now it's time to have a look at our card. Typically you don't read um, this flavor text here um, below the line allowed to other players. You typically do that when you whatever start that particular quest, but you are definitely encouraged to read on on your own because sometimes you see what you need to prep for. For example, you can work towards a certain skill for example to level up you can get specific resources because it gives you additional reroll stuff like that you can definitely again supposed and encouraged to read ahead but yeah now it's time to really officially read it i reached the cave i feel exhausted but i must endure too much is at stake. The objective here is relatively simple um we have to clear one of these dungeons so there are I think two or three, no, there are various um, levels of dungeons or variations of dungeons. Here we are in a cave, so we have to deal with a cave dungeon. In a normal scenario, there's a card which tells you what monsters you will encounter in a particular dungeon, or so there would be whatever a card that tells you, okay, in this you are 
facing human enemy and maybe a, I don't know, beast, uh, animal enemy. In this case, also the tutorial tells us what we need to do. But obviously we are now moving into our action phase and within the action phase we are entering that dungeon. Okay, in this scenario we have to engage two encounters in a row. So this is an encounter, basically one combat, this would be another encounter. Encounter could also be a trap for example, but in this scenario I think I know what it is. So let's start with our first enemy here. Oh wow, the mighty mud crab. So let's prepare the battlefield here accordingly. So it will start the game or start the fight with two heavy armor. There will be enemies that have two types of armors. Um, in this case it's two heavy armor. We also see the level, it's a level zero card, it belongs to the animal deck. Um, we see what kind of attack it does, what um, damage it deals, we see the experience we get. Sometimes there are additional loot boxes down here, but the mud crab doesn't really come with an awful lot of stuff. So we are now starting our combat in the very first round of combat. The first thing that you can do is to try to sneak by the, an enemy. Sometimes these enemies have ambush effects. In this case you want to really sneak by because otherwise they get a free hit against you which is typically not a great thing. But in this case we only need to roll one success and this is basically 50% on these dice here. So this symbol is three times on this six sided die here. So I think we should be fine. The standard amount of dice that you typically always roll is three. So that's already a good thing as it is. But let's also check our equipment. So our height armor gives us an extra die for a sneak test. Awesome. We are already at four. The iron dagger also gives us an extra sneak die. So we are already at five. I mean, this is pretty amazing. And on top of this, our special ability, the night vision says, in combat we can lose one health to gain sneak plus one. And in this case, let's do that, right? Nudge, nudge. So we are losing one health in order to get a six die for this amazingly simple roll, by the way. And I typically would know what would happen now. I would roll these six dice and none of these symbols would show, or none of these dice would show the symbol I need. <laughs> I mean, dice hate me, you know that. Um, of course, the scenario tells me to whatever, assume a certain die roll, but I think it's a little bit more fun to actually roll those dice. And in case I'm failing here, then I will cheat. <laughs> Because again, the scenario wants me to progress. But in this case, we are totally fine. We have rolled two of these symbols. We needed one for this. So we have successfully sneaked past the mud crab. So we were successful, which means I get to use any one of my attacks. Not for free, but I don't have to roll a die. So I really assume that my attack was successful. And because um, my iron dagger here says times two, we get that damage times two. The crab has a damage uh, um, armor rating, a heavy armor rating of two, but we are dealing um, light damage because we are throwing a dagger. We are trying to find the weak spot of an armor, which means we can totally ignore the armor type in this case. So we might as well go for the stab attack here. The stab attack costs us one of our, I keep forgetting what it is. There is a huge list of things, yeah. Our agility or so, this is what we have to spend. We get two damage, light damage times two because of our sneak attack. Let's check the armor again, because it doesn't have the light armor. It basically takes four points of damage. One, two is already fully sufficient. So I could have went for the swing attack here instead, but again, it doesn't really matter. We were able to defeat that mud crab before it could do any damage to us. So the mud crab is out of here. We check the reward section down here. This is one experience point. And if we would do that, in, let's say with a friend, everyone would gain that um, reward. At least the XP award is awarded to anyone. So let's park the experience here. In this game, you have to level up at the end of a game round when you have uh, reached your threshold. So for level one, that's seven, then eight, then nine, and so on. And everything that you get through in the turn that would bring you um, beyond that is basically lost. So let's say I would have already seven experience points and I would have gained one more for whatever reason, this would have been lost. And at the end of the game turn, I would level up, do a lot of stuff, and then would give away all my experience. And from there, I would continue to go. Unfortunately, we are not done yet. Yes, we still 
have an animal enemy um, to fight. So let's see what this is. Okay, that's a bear. Now we are talking. So this is definitely a much bigger challenge. It comes with the right amount of armor, or not armor, the right type of armor. So it has light armor in this case, and I'm only dealing light damage. So that's definitely kind of a problem and something to consider. And it definitely does hit us much more, but we will also gain more cool stuff from this card. The only relief, we will get our agility basically right, or stamina right back. The health unfortunately only resets at the end of a game turn, of a full round. So you don't really need to actively heal or drink potions between adventures. You will auto heal, but unfortunately you will have to make do with what you have during your turn. So if you are going through a series of combat rounds like I do in the series of encounters, this is what I have. If I would have to fight three enemies, then whatever. If I would be down to here, I would have to start from there with a third enemy. But in this case, let's wait and see. We have to defeat the bear, who is also a much bigger challenge in respect to our sneak test here. Um, but I think we will still try it. We can't use our Khajiit night vision ability because it says once per game turn. So we have to live with only five dice. Again, the scenario or the tutorial tells me what dice to set it to. But I think let's roll the dice and hope for the appropriate outcome. So in theory, we would need three of those. And this is actually, <laughs> this is, <laughs> it's, in, it's exactly the role that the tutorial tells us to set the dice to two successes and three times this one here, which is a 33% chance on each of those dice. So that's basically, this is a one to three, four to five, and the other result would be a six. But in this case, we only rolled two successes. We are not allowed to push, so we don't get any rerolls, which ultimately mean, uh, we have failed our test here. It's really basically our first um, action of the round, so we are not losing anything from that. So in this case, we simply move into the next round of combat. So this was our combat action for the very first combat round. So now we follow the normal procedure that we would uh, choose which player would basically fight in that combat round. Then we would use whatever potions and stuff, and then we would roll the enemy die. And I think this is what we are going to do now. So let's have a quick look at the bear special abilities. Nearly all um, faces will result in some damage in a shape or form. This is, I think, fire or magical damage, which wouldn't do anything for him. And there is also one blank. All the others are also basically evenly distributed on that die. Again, the tutorial would tell me what die face to use. In theory, I could now continue rolling and edit it out until I roll the proper result. But let's do that anyway. So this would have been great for me. But in this case, the scenario tells me no. It has rolled the X, which is basically a crush attack. So basically two heavy damage. And as we don't have the right set of armor, so we only have light armor, we take that damage in full. So we are losing one, two health points here accordingly, moving down to our ultimate defeat. We still have the final blow, so that's still an ace up in our um, back pocket, basically, uh, or on our sleeve. But for now, let's hope we don't need to use it. But then it's our turn to act. So we're using our equipped weapon. In theory, we could have um, switched weapons for one of those stamina tokens here. In this case, I don't think we need to do that. So I guess we are going with a step attack. Again, we will lose one stamina because that's the price that we have to pay. We are rolling our three dice. We don't have the one-handed skill, unfortunately, which would have given us a one extra die. So again, three is the base for everything. And we are hoping for at least once this symbol. It doesn't matter how often we would roll that symbol because it simply still triggers only once. But at least we want to roll it once in order to inflict some damage. So again, we are rolling some fake dice. So we are hoping for this symbol to appear at least once. Again, doesn't matter how often it appears. It doesn't multiply the damage or whatnot. It simply tells us we were successful. Similar to Eldritch Horror, right? typically you need to roll one success in most instances, that is. Um, so let's roll those and it's almost perfect. So the scenario wants us to fail in this case. So we have rolled these three symbols, which obviously is not good enough, but not all hope is lost. We can always push to basically get a reroll. So we are spending one stamina in order to do so. And this allows us to reroll one of those dice. And yes, wow, we even were successful. Amazing. So we did hit after all, which means we are doing two points of light damage. So we compare the bear's armor right now with our attack. So the bear has a light armor rating of four. We hit it for two. So that's not enough. And it's also the 
matching kind of armor in this case. Good news is, no matter what, it still will lose at least one of those. So if you would have rolled five, for example, five of those light armor, it would still only take one point of damage because five minus four, which the armor rating right now is, is still only one. So in this case, it doesn't really matter, but we made it much more vulnerable for our next attack. So if we hit the bear with a five the next time, for example, it would lose two points worth of damage. Uh, yeah, I think you get the idea. Next round of combat starts. Again, we are not changing any of our gear. We would roll the enemy die. And in this case, oops, it whiffed. So we are still alive. That's good news. I think, again, the game wants to teach us a lesson in this case. And then it's back to us. And I think this time we will go for a swing. The good thing about the swing, it doesn't cost us any stamina whatsoever. But we need to roll a six on one of these dice. So keep in mind, this result is only once on each of those dice. Still, we get to roll three of our dice. So let's see what we get and in this case yeah awesome we were amazing i think the scenario tutorial even would have told us to roll an epic roll like this three sixes in a row isn't that amazing one would be perfectly fine it does only do one point of damage but that's fully fine we still get one armor down so with the next attack it's still not good enough because we have nothing that would inflict basically three points or four points of damage in this case so i think we simply have to keep going so let's start the next round of combat again with the bear so we have rolled a skull wow that's a terrible blow for us actually it wouldn't really matter because we are right next to our final blow but for the sake of the tutorial we really react like <gasps> Wow, he would do three points of damage to us because, again, we have rolled the skull, which is a mole action. But instead of doing an or taking an offensive action, we can go for a defensive action. We don't have any skills for that. We still have to spend one stamina point for that, and then we can try to dodge. But the only result we need is one measly of those knots here. So let's cross our fingers here and yes awesome we were successful which means the total attack is completely blocked we are not taking any damage whatsoever we could go on like this but through divine intervention or through our the grace of our diedric masters the bear will just drop dead boop okay it's dead so i think you got the point so not really fun to watch um i'm pretty sure they could have scripted it to the end but that's the tutorial and you wanted to see that <laughs> Okay, the bear is dead. We still get one XP from killing the bear and then we, for this card we do have some loot. We could go for, I think this is a basic item or we could go for a plant-based resource. Honestly, I would have totally went for the basic good, but in this case, again, the tutorial tells me to go for the plant resource and then we have defeated the bear. This now would go back to the top of the respective decks. We would do some shuffling and whatnot if we would be um, basically above that level here and this is dependent on these numbers out here we might have to remove these level zero cards so if basically this cube would be here for example all level zero cards would have been removed by me so which means i also make the game more um, difficult for my fellow players if they would still be lower level this is something that kind of reminds me a little bit of the zombie side balance but i think it works pretty well because ultimately you, you need to help each other out every now and then in this game but there is more. As we have completed the dungeon here, the player who dealt the killing blow gains a basic yeah, equipment card in this case. Normally this would be random. Again, the tutorial tells me what card to draw. So in this case, these are the Jester's Gloves. Wow, we even get more sneak out of this. Isn't that amazing? So let's definitely equip that here. You can have up to four of those uh, trinkets and or potions in any combinations up here. Right now we are at one. So I think we are totally fine. Getting an extra sneak is of course pretty amazing. But there is still more as we have completed completed our objective here. We have cleared one mountain dungeon. No matter where it is, in this case it's here, so we can basically flip it over and of course we were successful. While leaving the cave, I get the feeling that will not be the last bear I will face. So we're gaining three more experience points. Now well, that's pretty amazing. These are two-sided and on the other side these are three. So we are already at five, two more, and we will have to level up to our first level, which is of course typically a good thing. 
Let's carry on. That night I find a note from Lothalmo under the door. Dangerous criminals have been spotted in Skyrim. Use your contacts to capture them. Find their names on the back. Payment as usual. You are my pawn. I'm tired of these old mer. Ignore their request. That's an order. We have an option. We can either... I can't ignore the Thalmo. We would gain um, scenario 6 or the next objective card 6. Or we could go for option 2. I better obey the Diedrich Prince. We would go for T7 in this case. And as I only have T6 in my stack of cards here, nudge nudge, what does this mean? I think this is the option to go for the list. I have some contacts in Windhelm who owe me some favors. Time to get even. So we are placing our marker here. So this is no longer accurate. We will place it to Windhelm, which is, as you certainly know, all the way here to the east of Skyrim in Windhelm. So this is where we need to go next. Again, we have cleared this one here, so we remove it. And yeah, in this case, we might as well simply move it over and then we will continue reading. But in this case, again, we are allowed to peek just to understand what it is we have to go for. So we will Go for a skill test, which is three dice as usual. And if we would have the speech skill, we would gain extra dice on that. We need these two results. And for each money we are spending, we can push pretty much re-rolling dice. And unlike um, combat checks and skill tests, you can do that unlimited amount of times yeah, until you're running out of resources, obviously. So we have some new directions to go for. It's the end of the game turn, which means we get all our yeah, stats back, our health, our stamina, our magic. Yeah, in this case, we didn't spend any magic. So we are pretty much fully healed for the next game turn to come. So which means we are now moving into the second game turn. And again, we are drawing our event card. Normally, the starting player marker would now move to the next player in a clockwise fashion. I think it's clockwise. Um, but in this case, again, we are playing alone. So let's see what we get. Excess wares. This is an active event. Recent economic activities had an impact on the amount of raw materials available. Okay, when we are exploring, um, I think, a wilderness space, or a town we would gain one additional good that's good and we still have to place one of these awful dreaded um, threat markers onto a card still we don't have any quest that would take those we don't want the world quest to fail just yet so i think it's really time to start placing it on next to one of these strongholds and why not going for solitude so it's now unstable which means we can't interact with the market there only there so not the end of the world but yeah that's life it's still an ongoing effect which means this card goes in here and stays active until the next active event pretty much pushes it out even though our main quest is all the way up there i think it might be a good idea to move down here to four wreath right why right not one two three four spaces that's our maximum without a without a horse and down here we are going for a so-called narrative exploration which is the turn or the action for our turn so we are drawing one of those yeah, I think town exploration cards are what those are. And this is Nerens. Help you out with some criminal? Of course. Give me a hand with this project first. First of all, we are gaining any one resource. So that's definitely a good thing. But keep in mind, because we have this event here still in place, we get an additional one. I mean, that's amazing. So why not going for two plant-based resources here? So we are flipping this to the other side. So from one, we are going to three. Lovely. Okay, next we will have to craft a sturdy chain. Um, so we are rolling a skill check, which again is three basic dice. We would gain extra dice if we would have the smithing special ability or the skill. We need two of those not symbols here in order to be successful. But for each plant token we are yeah, giving away, we could re-roll one of those dice. And I think in this case, let's totally do that. So let's roll some dice and keep in mind we can push in this case. So we are looking for two of these symbols. Now the tutorial tells me to fail, I believe at least least twice so it wants us to spend some of these plant resources so in this case this is perfect so we rolled one success this is unfortunately not successful so we are handing over one of our plant resources here in order to push because that's the ability so we get to re-roll here 
And in this case, we are successful. And I think we will stop here. I think you get the idea. We were successful after the first war, which means we are down to two plant resources. I think it doesn't really break things if we will leave it here. Normally, again, you could indefinitely spend those goods here or those resources for additional rerolls. And again, until you're running out. But in this case, again, you got the point. So we are getting some goodies. So we are gaining two gold. That's nice. And we gain two of these soul gems. Also very nice. So we take them into our inventory. And I think there is no limit how much we can carry, at least not for those resources here. Cool. Then we are removing this card and bringing card T8 into the game. So this mini quest basically was successful and in this case we were able to gain a new personal mission or quest this is um, you see that with this little dot here these are these personal goals and it's a first quest that actually gives us some breathing room in order to place tokens on top of it so we can now really yeah play some things and start playing the game a little bit more tactically i like that so what does it say narens leads me to a ruin not far from Wilt Windhelm. So we have to place one of our, this is now really the blue markers that have to go there because again this is a personal mission. This is now the second one in play into one of those things in the East March hold. So let's check it out. This is each East March. We have two of those spaces here. Um, so I think in this case uh, and I keep forgetting what those are. It really, this, this game really comes with a ton of icons and this particular one is a ruin it seems and we have two and in this case let's go for the southernmost one but our turn is still not over we are here at Falkreath um, we have taken our action this was this narrative exploration but we can still interact with the stronghold so we can still visit our other uh, market there and this doesn't cost us an action um, we don't really have an awful lot of money so I think it's not really worth it but what we can do is either um, enchanting or upgrading one of our items and I think in this case we have two of these soul gems here. and in order to upgrade our dagger we would have to spend two of our soul gems. So I think let's do that. So we are drawing the topmost card from the enchantment slash upgrade deck. Um, for every soul gem you are spending, you could gain extra cards if you're not satisfied with the result. But in this case, we will be satisfied. So this is a muffle, which wow, makes the dagger even more sneaky. And this is something I really like about this game is the upgrade mechanic. So you can use these cards in multiple ways. So for an enchantment, you would place it on top of the card. If you are upgrading a weapon, you would place it like here. If this would have been an armor, you would place it like this. Really nicely done. So in this case, again, the dagger makes us, or the muffle makes us definitely way more sneakier. I totally like that. Awesome. Next game turn, we will reveal our next event. And in this case, it's the Daedric Influence. It's pretty much a one-off. A Daedric Prince is forcing their will on Skyrim. At one threat to each quest. Okay, that's something we simply can't dodge. So we have to place one token in here. That's not a problem. The rules or the tutorial tells me to place one in here, but this cannot take a, a token. But for now, let's deal with the next threat token, which has to go on this world quest here. This has now hit its threshold. So it's fail, which says place a troll token on any of those nature spaces. Again, we get to choose where to place these tokens. These tokens are often double sided and have different numbers. So we are now flipping it and it's now on three, six, three, six, three, six, eight. And I think we are getting to place this here onto the space here in the reach. If you wouldn't be as cheap as I am, you would now place a miniature for a troll on that space. I was cheap, so for me it's a token, but they work perfectly well. Let's do some movement, and I think the idea is to move to our personal quest here in the East March. One, two, three, four, almost like someone scripted this. And there we are checking our card, and now we're reading below that line. We reach one of the main chambers, and Naren shows me the trap she's preparing. I need help lifting this so I can hang it on the hook. So we are rolling an agility test or a stamina test. Um, the more you have, the more dice you roll, but we need three of these successes, and we can still 
push. So now I'm not sure if I should have spent that extra um, leaf or plant-based token. But again, I think it's not the end of the world. Our stamina is one, two, three, four, five. So we roll five dice for this test, but it's still not easy to achieve. So again, we are rolling five dice. And depending on where we are, and yeah, we are pretty close to what we were supposed to roll, um, according to the tutorial. So we need three successes, and we are down to only two or one. I really didn't count that properly of these two plant-based resources. In theory, we could spend those now in order to reroll, but we would need three results anyway. So yes, we will definitely fail that quest. So let's flip this to the other side. It's a failure. The cage is too heavy for me. We managed to attach it to the hook, but it seems unstable, almost dangerous. So we will spawn a new threat token here. This card is now gone. It can no longer take any cards in this case, which is really, really bad. Narens decides to test her trap on one of the criminals I mentioned earlier. Seems like a good idea to me. We still have to bring this threat out. And the only place to place it is, again, next to one of those strongholds. So why not place it next to Morthal? So this was our personal quest here. We failed, but we still have to remove it. And then, yeah, I think we are pretty much moving to the, I think, final turn of the tutorial. So let's reveal the next event card. It's another active event, which means this is getting discarded. And we have to read this here. It's the perfect weather. The mild temperature lifts the spirit and makes every task easier. Once per game turn, gain a reroll when rolling a skill test. Now that's really nice. And that's something that stays in place until again we are replacing it with another active event. Nice. So let's see. We are moving, I think, next to winter. And we want to deal with our main quest, right? One, two, and three. And up there, I think it's really time to go for it straight away. So let's see with what we have to deal with. I enter Kendall Hearth Hall and approach one of the guards of duty. He listens to me while I explain the situation. Convince the guard. So we are rolling a speech skill. Again, we get a reroll because of this. This is amazing. And we also get rerolls for money. We have two gold. So we are pretty much bribing the guard in this case. And this is, I think, the first time that the game actually lets me roll the dice on my own. And now I'm certain I will fail. <laughs> We don't have the speech skill, so we don't get any extra dice. So it's a three dice here. We need two of those. But again, we have stuff. And wow, what an epic, epic fail. So we get one reroll because of our perfect weather card. So let's do that. Awesome. Still failed. I told you we are going to fail that. Wow, this is so bad. This is so bad. So we are spending one gold in order to push. So we are rolling again and we failed again. We could roll a second time, but we need two results. Yes, we are totally failing this with only one success. But again, the tutorial tells me that's okay. We will simply deal with what we are dealing with here. And it's a failure. It takes all the septims I have to convince him. I give him the list, lose all your gold. Okay, I've spent it anyway. We will still have to spawn one of those. Again, it has to go on one of the cities. Let's put it to Falkreath. I don't know. Doesn't really matter too much at this point in time. The list the Thalmor gave me is long. I will have to use most of my contacts to fulfill the Thalmor's request. My little pawn, you disappoint me. You chose a different master. Maybe it's time I find myself a new pawn. Congratulations, you have finished the tutorial. This tutorial has given you a quick overview of the main mechanics on the game. And I think it did so. And I think it did it relatively well. There could have been one or two more edge cases. We could have gotten a little bit clearer. But apart from that, I think it really gives you a good kickstart into the world of Skyrim. And to my surprise, I really enjoyed the game much more than I originally anticipated. It captures the world of Skyrim very, very well. Yeah, this was all scripted, not very fun to watch, but as soon as you really dive into the campaign, it's a great thing. There is some, hmm, I don't know, I have some minor concerns around replayability. Yes, there is some randomization in respect to the events, but when you go for specific cards, so when the scenario tells me dig out card one, two, three, for example, there is only one copy of one, two, three. And this is something which I always have a concern because it's so easy to make a game like this way more replayable by simply adding multiples of the same card. So let's say you have one or two cards of one, two, three, which 
a somewhat different flavor of what could happen. Not always. I, I get it. Sometimes you really need a very specific outcome for the story to progress if you want to run it within a scenario. But for some of those, I think it wouldn't really hurt them to add some extra cards. It's a lot of cards that comes with the game, especially if you're also adding the expansions. And again, with all the scenarios you have, I think you have a now, I think there are two campaigns in the base game. There is another one in the, I think it's in the Dawn Guard expansion. There is a new campaign with at least three chapters in there. You can also play these um, individual scenarios as a one-off scenario. You can go for the free roam thing. So I think there is a good amount of replayability in there. But again, even within the scenarios, within the campaigns, it would have been relatively easy to add a little bit more variety every now and then. But with that said, it's really a fun game. I like the combat mechanics. I like the upgrade mechanics. Um, it's feeling relatively fast paced so there's really not a lot of downtime even if someone moves into a dungeon yes it might take them two three four minutes to deal with a fight but that's about it so you don't have epic fights where you whatever rolling dice for the next 20 minutes or so that's not happening here it's relatively fast paced there's a good amount of items in those stacks you can go in very different directions for your characters very similar to the video game where you can have i don't know a bow shooting Archmage with, I don't know, um, throwing or whatever. Um, you get the idea. You can be everything, anything in this game, which is definitely enjoyable. And yeah, with that being said, let me know if you want me to continue with a proper campaign, with maybe the first chapter of the campaign or so. Let's see how things go. Um, and yeah, I will let you decide if you're interested in more or not. And yeah, hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And hmm, until then, bye bye.